Aging seems to appear rather dramatically and suddenly in your forties. Aging seems to appear rather dramatically and suddenly in your forties. Hello and welcome back to the Style and Beauty Doctor here on YouTube. My name is Danielle, in case this is your first time here. Welcome, have a seat, you know, stick around for a little while, consider subscribing and all that good jazz. As someone who is 39 years, 10 months, and five days old, I am knock, knock, knocking on 40's door and recently came across an article in The Strategist, which is a New York Mag property, um, where actually two dermatologists who have been on this channel before are quoted in the article, Dr. Michelle Henry and Dr. Corey Hartman. So I figured I'd go over some of the things in this article because they talk about, you know, if you are a beginner starting a routine in your 40s, you know, what you might need if you're more of an intermediate level, and then if you're more advanced, like some things that you would need uh, in your skincare routine. But I'm gonna do this as I do my nighttime routine. If you are approaching your 40s, you're in your 40s, heck, if you're in your 20s or early to mid 30s, this is good to know information. So you are ahead of the curve. So I have already double cleansed when I was in the shower. I used this Hado Lavo cleansing oil, which I recently just started using. So far, so good. And then I did my second cleanse with this Herbivore Pink Cloud Jelly Cleanser, which I bought this for a video where I was buying products that were pretty to see how, they, like if they actually worked well. And this actually worked well. And you know, check out that video. And I don't think a lot of people watch that video, but you know, check it out and you get a chance. My skincare routine at night um, is going to be <laughs> pretty straightforward and simple. So I am going to handle some, <laughs> some, some acne up in here. This is the Peter Thomas Roth uh, Goodbye Acne Complete Acne Treatment Gel. I don't believe this launched yet. This is like a little sneak peek. I am doing a partnership with them on Instagram, but I've been trying this out over the past couple of weeks and I actually really like it. So far, so good. Like, you know, like people were getting Acne Mechanica from the masks and getting like maskne. I think I've got Lockne. I haven't figured out what it is yet. Is it the product that I'm putting by my on my hairs here that's causing that? Is it the friction of the lock sometimes? I don't know, but I do know that this Peter Thomas Roth Acne Treatment helps to you know, get rid of it. And then we're gonna go into the tretinoin in which we are going to use a small pea-sized amount. Prescription tretinoin, 0.05%. This was prescribed to me by Dr. Michelle Henry. I've been easing my way into it. Ease on down the road is what you do with the tretinoin. There's a, I have a video on things that you need to know before you get on tretinoin because while it can give you some really great results, it can also be very irritating and extremely irritating for some people. So you want to ease your way into it, which is what I did. When I first got this, I was only using it maybe like once a week. And even then it was still like, like it made my skin feel sensitized a little. And you know, I was like, oh, let me try to, and I was only using it on this area here cause she gave it to me to kind of help with some like texture that I had here on my cheeks. But now I've, many months have passed and now I've been able to graduate where I can put it all over my face um, a few nights a week and you know, we're good. No, no issues there. That uh, pimple treatment contains salicylic acid. You can use salicylic acid with a retinoid, but you just want to be very, very careful. Everyone's skin is different. So you always want to go low and slow and proceed with caution when you're trying something new for the first time. This is not my first time. So we're going to get, see, we're going to make that little pea size amount work with this knowing we gonna make it work. And also contrary to popular belief, you can use um, a retinoid on the eye area. You don't wanna get it in the eye, cause you know, ouch. Most skincare things, you probably don't wanna get it in your eye. So next I'm gonna put my eye cream. This is the Olay Bright Eyes Eye Cream. And we're just gonna get that in. Then I'm gonna go in with my moisturizer, another Olay product, the Olay Regenerous Micro Sculpting Cream. I like to use the fragrance free, and I only got like a little itty bitty little scrid left in there. Um, this is one of my favorite moisturizers for the longest time. Now I've already put my body moisturizer, you know, on my chest and you know my body, so I don't need to bring this down there. But it's important to moisturize your neck 
in your chest. Okay, and in all my lips, I use the Ulta Lip Oil. It has been a long time, a favorite of mine for years. Now getting into this article, if no one has told you yet, here's a couple of things that are gonna happen as you get older, and you might have started noticing it already if like you're in your 30s. So our hormones <laughs> can cause a heck of a lot of change in our skin. So if you've never had acne before, you might be noticing some acne. Um, you might be noticing some facial hair and Man, have I been noticing the facial hair. Also, some other things that happen to us as we age. By the time we hit 30, our collagen levels, we're like, we are losing collagen <laughs> bit by bit, year by year as we get older. And it, it starts like, even, even sometimes before 30, sometimes it starts at like at the age of 25, you start to lose less and less collagen. Now collagen is the protein in the skin that keeps it snatched. So, you know, as we get older, we lose a little bit of that. And then that could kind of lead towards the you know, loss of elasticity and a little bit of the droopy skin. So Dr. Michelle Henry, my dermatologist, who is also quoted in this uh, article, um, she says that after the age of 30, we lose, we have 1% less collagen production and we start to lose a teaspoon of fat in the face each year. And then she also mentions that the cumulative effects of sun damage start to show up and you start to see more hyperpigmentation. So there's a lot of stuff going on as we, you know, hit into our fourth decade. Now, very important line I want to point out because in my video where I got cheek filler, um, there were some interesting comments in that video. Uh, but one, one that was really interesting was where someone was like, um, you know, eat your way, like eating exercise would have like helped with the sagging skin. And it was just like, no. <laughs> It's not how it works. So in the article, they mentioned that deep tissue issues like fat loss and sagging, and I did have some sagging on my skin after losing weight. Check out that video if you haven't. Some people give skincare too much credit, right? <laughs> like skincare is really, really good. Like I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that your skincare products mean nothing because they do. You know, you obviously you wanna make sure you're properly cleansing your face, that you're exfoliating, that you're moisturizing, and that you're protecting your skin with sunscreen during the day, right? But your products, even your strongest serum, and, and lotions and potions are not going to be able to give you the type of volume that you would get from getting filler. It's just not, there's no cream out there on the market that does that. Now, when you get filler and you get the Botox, that doesn't mean that your skincare routine's out the window. You still need to cleanse, you still need to treat the skin, you still need to moisturize, and you still need to obviously protect your skin from the sun. Now, what I like about this article is they kind of break it down into three parts where they give you some tips on what you can do to start a routine. So if you're a beginner, they give you three easy basic steps. Cleanse, moisturize, and protect. And they even have they even have the products here for you. So everyone's favorite, <laughs> almost everyone's favorite, CeraVe Hydrating Facial Cleanser is something that they recommend here. So something to look into. If you've tried these uh, CeraVe Hydrating Face Wash, um, and you know you want to let us know about your experience, let us know in the comments. Um, and they also mention a moisturizer with antioxidants, and here they have the La Roche Posay Double Repair Moisturizer. Antioxidants are what help to kind of like fight off that free radical damage because during the day there's just so much stuff just coming for our skin and the environment, pollution, just the UV, like oh, all of it is just coming for us. And antioxidants kind of help to protect us from some of that damage. And then of course you're gonna want a sunscreen. They mention a mineral one here, Skin Medica's Essential Defense uh, Mineral Shield, SPF 35. <laughs> they talk about how much of the aging we experience is coming from the sun. UVA is responsible uh, for about 89% of the visible signs of aging. So one of your best defenses against aging, of course, is sunscreen and of course also hyperpigmentation because UVA also worsens hyperpigmentation. Beginner, just to recap, they talked about using a gentle cleanser, a moisturizer with antioxidants, and then a sunscreen during the day. But they also have a non-irritating retinoid here, and they have the Olay Regenerous Retinol 24 as a suggested product. I've used that before, I've loved it. I've also moved on to their Olay Retinol 24 Max, which I also really liked. Um, but once that was done, I was like, you know what? Maybe I can move one up <laughs> to the Tretinoin, and, and that's exactly what I did. Retinoids can do so many things for the skin, and they have a lot of receipts that they can do a lot of things for the skin. 
Um, but unfortunately for some people, they can be very irritating. So you want to slowly ease your way into using them. I have a video on um, 10 things you want to know before you start tretting knowing. Uh, so make sure you check that out for some, some of my insight on that. So now intermediate level. So they say at the intermediate level, introduce products that repair damage and treat problems that can occur in our forties, like dark spots, fine lines, and even acne. So you're going to use the beginner products and then these are add ons. So they mention a skin brightening serum and they have the Vichy vitamin C brightening skin corrector here. Vitamin C is something great to have in your routine. There are different types of vitamin C. If you want to learn more about vitamin C, which ones you want to use and what vitamin C really does for the skin, I have a vitamin C guide for black skin, which I did with uh, esthetician Deja Ayadeli. So make sure you check that out for more info. But I like using a vitamin C during the day because it's going to help me uh, paired with my sunscreen, it's going to help to protect me from the environmental damage, the pollution, the, 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 uh, just the conk that's out there, the UV that's out there just is coming for our skin during the day. They also mention a hyaluronic acid serum. Like I, I feel like I don't like to use multiple serums in my routine. I'd rather have one serum that has a, that can knock a couple of steps off in my routine. So I don't use a separate hyaluronic acid serum. Let me know if you do in the comments below. Oh, they even mentioned my, my fave Olay Regenerous Micro Sculpting Cream. Um, Dr. Henry says that, you know, if you were someone who didn't use a cream by the time you're in your 20s, you might want to switch to a cream now. She said you might want to look into a rich cream because your skin is getting drier and drier. And, and that's, that's unfortunately very true as we get older. Even if you're someone with oily skin, because I have oily skin, and it's it's my skin is still oily it's not as oily as it was like when i was in like my teens or my 20s now they mention a product here from skin better science called alpha red overnight cream it's 125 dollars. so dr corey hartman likes this one he says that you know the hesitation with incorporating our retinol into your routine is potential irritation and dry skin uh, but Alpharet figured out how to put a prescription strength retinol and a glycolic acid into a lotion that I've yet to see it cause a problem for, for anybody. So that like piqued my curiosity. I was like, ooh, what's that? But I already got the track known, so I'm like, I think I'm good there. But if you would try that or if you've tried it before, you know, let me know in the comments. And then they mentioned an eye cream. So the thing with eye creams is that I feel like it's one of those products where people are like, it does nothing for me or they overhype an eye cream, right? I think eye creams are great because the skin underneath my eyes is drier than the skin all over my face. So all over my face, I'd probably use something like a light lotion, whereas underneath my eyes, I do want like maybe something that's a little thicker for, for my under eye area. So for me, a separate eye cream is great. Some people can just use their regular facial moisturizer and that, that's good for them. Now I have had under eye filler and there is no eye cream on the planet in the solar system <laughs> in the universe that is going to give you the type of volume that i got with filler there's just no eye cream there's no diet <laughs> there is no food there's no exercise that you can do to you know increase volume underneath the eyes right eye creams are great though they can help with um fine lines and wrinkles if you use them consistently over time now if you want to know about discoloration underneath the eyes i have been going through a lot to get rid of the discoloration underneath my eyes and there's a whole series on that so make sure you check that out I've had a very marked improvement with the discoloration under my eyes from seeing dr. Michelle Henry she gave me a prescription cream she gave me a, a series of peels and like all that info all that whole history is in a bunch of videos that I'll link in the description box and then they added in a couple of other things um, some exfoliation very important because our, our cell turnover process starts to slow down as we get older. Now, basically what that means is the process by where your skin makes new skin cells and just gives you a nice glowing new skin. Now, when we're younger, that process is, is maybe about 20, 28 days. But as we get older, it's like it's getting on the 30s and the 40s and maybe even longer. And exfoliation kind of helps to get rid of that layer of dead skin cells because the dead skin cells on the skin can just kind of like kill your kill your shine like kill your glow like it just makes you look dull and it can make the skin look uneven exfoliation is very important but don't overdo it because if you overdo it you can ruin your skin barrier and cause some other issues now for advanced levels now they got some 
<laughs> they got some contenders in this advanced thing. So uh, Dr. Hartman says, if you're looking in the mirror and you're seeing your mother or father staring back at you, or if you notice a skin texture that's not as smooth as, or as even, then you might want to step it up a little bit. Now he does mention that once your skin is acclimated to your basic or intermediate routine, you can start adding additional options from the intermediate list. So basically that's another way of saying chill out, go low and slow, and then work your way up. We don't go guns a blazing with our skin. Cause if you do something that irritates your skin, you can wind up causing more issues for yourself. So they do mention in this intermediate section that if you're in your forties and you haven't yet gotten any kind of treatment from an esthetician or a dermatologist, this is the time to consider it. And th that's me all the way. <laughs> like, I, I don't, cause I'm looking through some of these products and like there's a, um, anti-inflammatory serum. This thing is $250. There's um, a serum for cell rejuvenation, $295. This retinol from Aven is um, $62. That's not, that's not bad. But I'm looking at the prices of these things and I'm like, oh. Of course a procedure, certain procedures may cost more at the dermatologist or esthetician. I feel like I would rather spend the money on a procedure than a product because at least with the procedure, I'm gonna see a better result than a product that I'm like, I don't know if this $300 cream is gonna work. So they do mention Cispera, um, a serum for hyperpigmentation that Dr. Alexa Stevens, who's also on YouTube here, loves that. Dr. Corey Hartman likes it as well. The active ingredient in it, cysteamine. He said, instead of targeting one pathway in the development of pigment like hydroquinone, it upregulates the good melanin and downregulates the bad melanin. So you get a nice evening of the skin tone while it lightens the dark spots. Thing with Cispera, I attempted to try it for some dark spots I had on my chin probably like four or five, maybe even six months ago. You really gotta be committed to this Hespera, right? That would be something that, it's $189. If it made sense for me, I would definitely fork over the money. I wound up getting Suspera because, you know, a, people's brands and I go to events and I get sent a lot of product, right? So to me, if I had more of an issue with hyperpigmentation, that the Suspera would be worth it to me, but you have to really make sure that you pay attention to the directions because you need to leave it on for like 15 minutes in the morning. Do it before you, you do any like cleansing of your skin, which doesn't seem intuitive. So I just, I kept watching my face and be like, oh, I forgot to put this Aspera on. So it is like a kind of like a learning curve when you do it, but a lot of dermatologists love it. And that's enough for me to, you know, for me, if I had more of an issue to do something like that. And then they also mentioned a couple of like some of the like devices. So there's a collagen building red light, light stem for wrinkles, $249. And then they also mentioned the new face skin tightening facial device. I actually have a new face here that I need to talk to Dr. Michelle and ask her if I need to incorporate that into my routine. Of course, the new face is also something I got in um, PR. The thing with these devices though, I would, me personally, right? I would only use those devices if like I went to Dr. Michelle or if I went to an esthetician and had some sort of treatment and then I was using the device to kind of like for like upkeep. But if I had something where it was, where I was looking for more of a dramatic change, I think I would just like skip buying the device and then just go straight to the derm or the esthetician. Just because these devices at home only have but so much potency to them, which is great because then, you know, you can hurt yourself with anything, but the chances of you really, really, really hurting yourself aren't as high with some of these at-home devices because they can only do but so much. But because they can only do but so much, it might not be effective depending on what your issue is. So it, you, you gotta weigh things out when it comes to some of these devices because they can be pretty expensive. And then if you're not gonna use them consistently, then it's just like money down the drain. This was a really interesting article. I think I am on my way um, in the morning, I use a vitamin C serum and my sunscreen, which they mentioned is really great. And then I use my retinoid at night, which is also really great. I got my cream. So I, I feel like I'm on well on my way. I've already started having a relationship and going to the derm and an esthetician. I do think I want to increase my facials though. I do think that I could do a better job of going in regularly for a facial because I think that'll kind of, you know, just kind of like, up the ante on what I'm already doing at home. Now, this skincare in your 40s thing, I think is something that we're gonna talk about more regularly on the channel. Like, th there'll be other videos where I kind of talk about skincare in your 40s and 
also the social stigma of being a woman over the age of 40. Like, well, we'll talk about it. Um, but until then, I'm going to take my behind to bed. I need to catch up on my beauty sleep, which is something else that is quite important. But at any rate, please leave your comments below on your thoughts. Um, what's your skincare routine looking like right now? Were there some things that the article mentioned that kind of was like, oh, I need to do that. Or, oh, I need to add this into my routine. Let's get all chitty chatty in the comments. Let me know um, because we are a skincare community. The more you comment and, and talk about your experiences uh, with your skin and with certain products, the more that people who are either communicating or sometimes we have people who just read the comments and may not engage as well, but you never know who you can be helping out you know, it when you leave your comments. So please, please leave your comments and be as detailed as possible. Follow me on social links will be in the description box, um, as well as a link to the article and some of the products that I mentioned in the video. If you want to get those links, that will be there in there as well. And I'll see you fine folks in my next video. Bye guys.